Good evening, good sir. I am sorry that I kept you so long, but fine, I'm trying to get this practice report out. We got to talk about our Tigers here. Yeah, man. I want to say thank you. What's wrong with yeah. your voice? I've been a little under the weather, man. I have to cancel my show. Got a weird medical condition uh, that, that I'm overcoming. I talked to you for like 30 minutes earlier today. I know, and I didn't even I didn't even notice it. Yeah, yeah. So hopefully I'm not turning into uh, a reptile. Um, but I I power through for you, man. I really do. And I want to say thank you. You're in my uh, my video earlier today, actually, uh, with a little cameo. So I appreciate you, man. And I appreciate your awesome practice reports <laughs> and your awesome AYS video, man. Your yeah. video stuff's Next gotten game. better. So Next make sure you go check them out, AYS on, on Twitter. But, um, I but I was well, I no would problem. have punted. I would have punted this to make to make sure that you felt better. I did not force you to come on here. I did not know. Well, well I I probably couldn't do like a full hour show, but I, I don't mind, dude. I I'm always going to hop on for you. I, I've sat through tornadoes for you. I've sat through um, horrible pause jokes for you. And and, and oh you. no, horrible pause jokes. They've all been no, pretty good and consistent. Well, no, I believe it or not, you got to go watch this video. Okay. The one I posted today, you actually had one, and he didn't know I was recording them. You had the worst one ever. You didn't know it, so make sure. Uh, we, uh, it, 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 was, wait, hold on, you gotta tell me. You can't. You gotta no, tell no, no, me. I can't. I can't. I, can't, I, can't I, I don't even remember. It was how you said it, because uh, I, I said, "Give me a good let's go," and then you said, oh, "I'm sorry, I can't give it to you right now." <laughs> <laughs> it was oh, so. Man. It was so good. And oh, no. You said oh, it so sultry. In fairness, you were calling me while I was in the shower getting ready for the shows. We didn't need that detail. We, 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 Dude, I'm 50 pounds down, baby. They got, look, I'm people want to look. look at this whole thing here, man. Yeah. All right. Let's get to it. Carter, we're in, going into tomorrow. I mean, tomorrow's basically here. I mean, it's the night. I, I guess what have you made of the first three days that you've seen the Tigers be on the field here in fall camp? Did I start offensively? You know, when I look, I look for like specific things that really jump out to me. Um, you know, it, it's cool when you see a guy like Shelton Sampson make a jumping catch at practice a few days ago. But I look at some things that that stand out. And obviously, I don't have the same luxury of you going to practice. But I talk to you. I talk to other media members. I talk to people um, that – are involved with the LSU football program. It's going to be interesting to see how they incorporate the tight ends, Blake. This is I agree. This is the best tight end room LSU's ever had. Um in, in terms of depth, in terms of upside, in terms of reliability, it's it's really, really, really good. And you add to that with a really good offensive line. What I think, and, and this was something I theorized a little bit earlier this summer. It would not shock me if LSU runs more outside zone compared to inside zone. Because if you're running outside zone, it makes Will Campbell and Emory Jones a bigger focal point of what you're going to do. And on top of that, um, Mason Taylor and Will Campbell in particular, their combo blocks are like butter. And you've seen that some in practice, whether it is outside zone splits. I mean, I know it's a bunch of football jargon. But essentially, an outside zone is just a, a stretch handoff, a longer handoff to the outside. It's what the, the 49ers have won all these games doing. So, you know, if you could do that at a 12 personnel, you can outgap people. You could do a lot of sexy things. And if Kamari on Pimpton keeps playing the way that he's playing, Blake, he's had really good practices. Very and, good. I mean, he's beating out my, Mac Markway at this exact moment. Yeah, that was going to be my biggest concern because Markway, going back to his high school days, actually has more experience playing tight end. You know, for me, Kamari on Pimpton Blake had one of the highest grades I've given. Um, I, I, But my biggest concern was the blocking because he was a wide receiver in high school. If he becomes a decent blocker, you're looking at a really, really high-level football player. And him and Mason Taylor on the field at the same time is just really – you could do a lot of sexy things with that personnel. Or if you – and, and one other thing about Mason Taylor, he's really good. He's a top 100 player according to EA College Football. He's played a lot of snaps, Blake. He's played a lot of snaps. So Kamari Pimpton or potentially trade as green if he can block, him being the full-time tight end in, in some 11 personnel settings would make Mason a lot better in terms of his durability 
and he's been a very durable player. So the tight end room has really jumped out to me, Blake. I thought it was going to be good. We'll see when the actual bullets fly here in a few weeks, but this room has a chance to be really special, and I, I give Slade Nagel and Brian Kelly a lot of credit for for developing them. Well, not only that, I, I think the biggest thing is that, one, we already have a depth chart change, that being Mac Markway being with the twos and yeah. threes, really. Um, Pimp has been him out. But, Carter, here's the thing. I know that you're talking about blocking. You can't you, – at, at this exact moment, you can't keep him off the field because of what he's doing catching the football. And, and, that, is, and that is the biggest thing for me. And you know what, man? Sloan was all over their ass today because they started off sluggish. After the Nussmeyer interception in the back of the end zone, the Stamps, they did not look good for a quick minute. And they had thrown, I think, three or four incompletions between Nussmeyer and Collins. Then Pimpton makes that diving catch, and then they don't they don't miss another one. And right. dude, the the move he makes on I mean, we posted on our social media. Go to yeah. AYS Sports. Yeah. The yeah. double move on Spears, which, by the way, Spears was running with having first-team reps today. Yeah. So, I, I get what you're saying about Mark Way. I'm, I, I get it. They, lent, they ran a shitload of 12 personnel out of the shotgun. You know what they did? You remember when Darnell Washington and Brock Bowers were at Georgia in 22 and they were just mauling human beings and they were run the ball out of the shotgun and then they would start opening some things up with Stetson? That's exactly what they're doing because they have the ability to do it. And that – but, Carter, here's the question. When you have a guy like Chris Hilton going off today, how do you prepare for what needs to happen? Like what personnel grouping do you run out there if you're a defense when they can line up and maul you and then you got speed like Chris Hilton on the outside? They're going to be a very difficult puzzle piece to figure out. Yeah, and one thing that's going to be key is Joe Sloan, right? What, Never been in this situation before, Carter, ever. Yeah, and what I, I think he's talented enough. I think he's going to be great this year. My only piece of advice I would give him after watching LSU football for so long and the unique, very deep position groups that LSU has had over the years is at some point you're going to have to hurt some feelings, all right? And that's the hard part of being about an OC at a LSU because – there are plenty of guys that would be getting targets at Alabama right now that are currently running twos and threes right now with LSU. Mm -hmm. And for me, Blake, I prefer my position groups in the skill position in particular to be very condensed in terms of rotation, right? I, I, I've just never been a big fan of a deep, deep, deep rotation. So if you do a combination of those things, there's going to be some guys that aren't going to play. They're not going to get targets, right? So what I would do is obviously use, you know, all your versatility, all the different players and all of that, but really ask yourself, who are my guys? Who are the guys that I know can go out there and get it done for me in this first game um, in, in, in a big spot? Look, there is no warm-up game, and we see all these great things in practice. We get your great practice reports on AYS and all that stuff, but – you you got to ask yourself, who are the guys? And for me, Blake, right now it's Kyron. Right now it's Chris. And, you know, I would like Mason Taylor to be involved. Those are the three guys I would for sure have locked in. Even though I personally prefer Xavion Thomas over <clears throat> maybe a Chris Hilton just because of a, a little bit higher of a production profile last year. But find who those guys are and play those guys. Don't worry too much about making sure everybody gets involved because there's plenty of guys that can go out there and get the job done. They're ro they're rotating five guys out wide now. Xavier Thomas is down with a hamstring. He didn't go today. Right. Uh, I don't know what to make of Aaron Anderson at the current moment. I mean, two big time catches, two big time plays. Carter competition is breeding out wide, buddy. I, I, I I'm to the point. Let me just say this. I'm to the point. If I don't want to make this a definite at the current moment i don't know if you just didn't reload right yeah, like, okay. I, yeah. I think that you reloaded now what does that mean does that mean you have two premier first round wide receivers i don't know that okay that is big shoes to feel carter malik neighbors was doing a lot of the same shit that chris hilton was doing today a lot of the same shit being wide ass open in the back of the end zone bang touchdown 
If Nuss hits him on that third on that post route, then we're talking about three times they go down the field. He's he, he's there. He makes the catch, and it's a touchdown. Let me ask you this: um, sticking with offense, I got hit a lot with this question today. I, I'm wondering if you have as well, because people are talking about the interceptions that Stamps and Allen and um, Jordan Gilbert have had the last couple of days. Are you concerned about any of the turnovers and interceptions that Nussmeyer is throwing? Yeah, but one thing is he's always had interception issues in practice. Right? I agree. You you would, you know, in the spring, you would think Sage Ryan was at Reed, right? There was some. Well, he had a day where he had three picks. Yeah, exactly. Right. So it's not uncommon. There are some quarterbacks that come from the background hey, I'm going to risk everything in practice to see what works, right? Um, and, and and you're obviously there, but I was told about a play where there was a pick, but I understood that he was trying to throw a deep ball to Landon Ibietta, right? And I guess he's just trying to see if Landon Ibietta can go up there and make a play. It was the, what I was told, not, a, not the Vast, best. Vast, yeah, vastly under – Landon Ibietta, okay. I know exactly the play that and you're I, talking I, about. Right. Inside fade route, and Ibietta gets a couple of steps. I forget, maybe on Jordan Osbury or Austin Osbury, maybe. Austin Osbury catches a pick. Mm. So I, I, he vastly underthrows him. Yeah. Now, so it's got to get cleaned up. I mean, it, there's no other way around. Well, I mean, it, yeah. it's one on one rep. He picks the ball off good on Austin Osbury. By the way, Austin Osbury had the very tight coverage and really good coverage on Kamari and Pimpton where the only way that he was able to catch it was dive, catch, and then secure. Yeah, I, I, I don't <laughs> – hey, I know a lot of people have made a lot of things about Austin Osbury. Hey, big doll, I don't know. I mean, if you get bad enough, you might have to run him out there and see what you got. I, I'm down. And – yeah, so so that rep in particular was really he got really physical with the six six guy. I mean, that was I was very impressive. But obviously Garrett Nussmeyer, yeah, you, you hope you don't see these turnovers. And that's just yeah. always the that's just always a part of it, right? And and what they right. would kind of take for granted with Jaden Daniels was how few turnovers he had and all the plays that he played never really committed turnovers. So it's it's a little bit different, Garrett Nussmeyer, but hopefully the vertical passing game makes up for it. I am not worried about the one-on-one reps and the picks. Let me tell you what I'm worried about. Spring game, spring practice, we had a trouble at converting in the red zone. They have gotten into the red zone and refused to run the football. What they have done is, is that they've opened the shit up for him to get as many looks in the red zone as he could possibly get before game one. I love what Joe Sloan is doing there. However, I hate when you have red zone turnovers. I especially when the ball is picked off in the end zone. About what some people be, uh, believe, Carter, about a secondary that might not be good. I am fine with some of the picks that happen, but when Jordan Allen catch, catches a pick in the red zone, when you have Ashton Stamps today catching a pick in the end zone, it's not that I'm worried. I'm not worried. Like. I'm not, but how am I supposed to resolve that that is reality of what happened? And it, honestly, Blake, it should worry you some. Now, once again, I'm very pro Nuss. I, I, I just am. But the red zone turnovers out of anything that's been an Achilles heel for him, and if you want to do extended red zone, that adds on to it as well. Um, about I remember the-, the play at Georgia against Georgia in the second half of the SEC yeah. championship game where he threw the pick? Yeah, and that was in the red zone. Yeah. yeah, that is what is happening. If I if I could paint a picture for the fans about what is happening in practice, it's that. You know what? It's that game. It's right. that half. It, so, it's exactly what's happening. And and his red zone turnovers have been bad. I mean, there's, there's some of them. Now it's gotten better. They they I weren't agree. Bad. they weren't bad last year. It's just in way yesteryear. So as long as he doesn't do that, I don't mind. And Joe Burrows talked about this in interviews. I don't mind sacks on third and long. I don't mind long interceptions on third and long. I'm fine um, in the right circumstance, right? It's those interceptions that do take points off the board uh, that get to you. Yep. And one thing. One thing I will say. Uh, 
he, I understand you lose Malik Neighbors and Brian Thomas Jr. There, I, it's going to be really hard for someone to be as good as those two guys. It just is. But this supporting cast is really good. This is a really, really freaking good supporting cast. And Blake, you can even go one step further. This might be the best supporting cast at LSU for a first year starter, uh, if that makes sense. Um, I it, still don't think you can be be well. Well, I mean, maybe Matt Flynn in 07. That was, that was a pretty great team. But I mean, you look at the draft picks. You look at the offense. I mean, I, I do think this is the best LSU offensive line I've seen. I think this is get the to them next. It, what'd you say? We'll get to them next. Yeah, I, I think this is the deepest LSU's tight end room I've ever seen. Mm-hmm. I think the wide receivers are really good. Um, and I think the running back room is fine. I wouldn't put them with the elite LSU running back rooms, but there's a lot of really good players there. And he's got continuity, right? Mm-hmm. Entire offensive staff is back outside of the main play caller, who your new play caller has actually been your position coach, which is different. Normally, the OC leaves. He's also the QB coach. You have a better relationship with Joe Sloan than you probably did the OC that left. So, there are so many different things going in Garrett Nussmeyer's way going into next year. Um, offensive line, which is going to be tied to defense because of what I'm about to say. It's been a mauling. It's not yeah. been good for one unit. However, Carter Brad Davis screaming on the top of his lungs throughout pack practice, what are you going to sacrifice to be great? Buddy, I, I, I don't know. Like, I, I, I look at Will Campbell, I look at Emory Jones, I look at that, what Garrett Dellinger, me and you had a conversation about him this weekend in reference to that BK needs and Brad Davis needs so much praise about the development of Garrett Dellinger, where how far he's come. Yeah. G, DJ Chester has looked really good. Carter, <laughs> uh, I, 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 think, I, I think that they're going to kill some people. I, I, I really do. I, I think Will Campbell's going to hurt kill a man. <laughs> I mean, it, look, I mean, Will, I, I won't say what I'm going to say about Will aloud. I'll tell you privately, and I might say it, you know, next week. But, man, what, what he said today, which just gives you chills, right? Ten wins just isn't enough, right? This group really wants to go out there and prove they're special. And, you know, if Sloan calls a, a decent run game, this unit will snatch souls, like you said. And once again, it helps having Mason Taylor right? The highest graded run blocking tight end in the SEC last year. So I'm with you, Blake. I mean, th- this offense line is going to be very good, especially if DJ Chester turns out to be a decent center. And what I like to go Dellinger, I mean, Garrett Dellinger, there were some reps early in his career where he was just getting thrown around. Not right? now he ain't. But now he is, he's just a BAMF. And full disclosure, him getting thrown around, it was against a lot of five stars, right? This dude is a really really good mm-hmm. football player who more than likely will get drafted in the fourth or fifth round next year. I mean, he's really been that solid. I, I mean, so basically he's Damian Lewis. Yeah. I mean, he, he, he has a good shot of playing in the NFL a long time. And you know, with Jersey numbers, you, you, you got, you got to be good wearing number 72 at LSU, man. You got to miles My, Frazier though. I, I, miles had like three pancakes today. I mean, there was a rep and run game that Don McKinley got welcome to the SEC. That's crazy. He well, got welcome. And hold, hold, very quickly. Oh, go ahead. When I tell you it was bad, I when when it happened, when and Miles got up, I'm like, oh shit, a fight's about to break out. It didn't break out, but I but it's those kinds of plays and the way that Miles Frazier reacted. I'm like, oh shit, here we go. And some jawing started, which I, I don't mind. But then you got Will Campbell running over from the opposite side to, like, like celebrate with Miles Frazier. And they walk around. This is the truth. Now, do they have to go and prove it? You're goddamn right they got to go out there and prove it. Do they walk around like they're the best fucking unit in the country? Yes, they do. They might be. Yeah, no, you know, I, I, I'm, I'm with you, Blake. They're really good, and... It's always best, and I won't get into different examples of this, but when your best players are your best leaders, it's a game changer. I spoke to T-Bob no earlier. I spoke to T-Bob earlier today, and 
you know, it's amazing when he talks about Tyron Matthews. Like, no, Tyron Matthews was a better leader than he was a player. You just didn't see it, right? He said, and I understand it didn't end right, but he said when Tyron was on the field, he just demanded a different level of excellence from everyone. And when your best player, Will Campbell, is like that as well, you know, calling out the team saying, hey, you know, heads might roll if we don't go to the playoff this year, which I don't necessarily agree with, but you got the idea of what what he said, you know, 10 wins, not good enough. We got to win natties uh, at LSU. That's why I'm wearing one of my natty shirts right now. <laughs> well, let, let's hope they can lean in on it. They have, they have hid Caleb Jackson for a, for a little bit. You don't want to know why? Because every time he's touched the ball, or every time that he touched the ball in eleven on eleven a day, went for six. Let me let me just read this. Every first touch that he got in eleven on eleven went for six. Like he's good. <laughs> hey dog, you have you ever seen American Sniper? Wait, uh, who, who starred in that? Let me see that. Uh, 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 Was it Matt Damon? No, it was uh, – No, that's uh, Shooter. Yeah, that's – no, it, it, Matt, it was Mark Wahlberg in that one. Mark, it was – uh, No, Mark Wahlberg. Okay. Bradley Cooper. Okay, I'm pretty sure. And remember when they were in Buds and they were yelling, yes, sir, we dick them down. That's what this running game is going to look like. Huh? 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 I hope that's you're right. the, uh, I, I, I'm pretty bullish on that. Let's move to the defense. Carter Ashton Stamps continues to three straight days be somebody that everybody's talked about because of the action on the field. But consistency has to be something that he works on. Can't ignore that he's coming away with some big-time interceptions here in practice. And he's got Uno, man. A lot of great DBs. Dante, uh, Christian Fulton, that worn that number one. Ed Reed. Uh, not Ed Reed, Eric Reed. Um, man, I, I love me some Ashton Stamps. I really do. Uh, I always cheer for the Louisiana three-star, and Blake, this is a guy who's trained at DPT NOLA where a lot of great DBs and, and, and wide receivers have gone through. Very competitive guy, and I'm excited. And look, am I very concerned at the same time? You bet your ass. You bet your ass. I, I'm very concerned. Consistency. But, yeah, I, I, I think patience is, is going to be needed. Because uh, there will be some games, you know, you're going up against Trey Harris. You're going up against some of the best receivers in the country this year. Uh, I think he's pretty solid, though, Blake. I, I really do, and I, I'm looking forward to seeing him play next year. What else stands out to you defensively before we get you out of here? Yeah, Blake, it's the defensive line, right? It, it's a concern. It really is. And, you know, I understand we're in this spot where – a few years ago, okay, going into 2022, the LSU offensive line looked okay going into that Florida State game. All right, I think we can all remember this. So O-line looked fine, right? The issue, though, wasn't so much that the O-line was necessarily playing good or bad. It's that our defensive line wasn't as good as Florida State's defensive line, and they overwhelmed LSU, right? Mm -hmm. So we're in this spot in Florida State these last two years, some of the best defensive lines you'll ever see. The point here is you have to weigh two different things. Is it the LSU offensive line that we're hyping up as one of the best units we've ever seen? Is it them being so good? Or is it the LSU defensive line not being so good? And, Blake, I, I know this will sound like hyperbole. You know, I love coming on your show and all that stuff. But I really do think you have the best LSU offensive line going up against – one of the shakier LSU defensive line groupings we have seen uh, in the modern era since Saban has, you know, turned this thing into what it is now. So it is a concern. It's something obviously that keeps you up at night. It keeps me up at night. It's, it's, it's something, right? So we'll, 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 we'll see how it plays out uh, here in just a few weeks. The thing is, is that <clears throat> here's a take that I hear from a lot of people that I, I hate. Yeah. You face four, draft picks along Florida State's defensive line. You're not – like, those are hard-fought NFL type of games. If you're running the ball up the middle at four yards of carry, by the way, your best back wasn't there. I will remind people, the first person that got the first touch was Trey Bradford last year. I don't yeah. think that – like, Caleb Jackson wasn't ready for that moment. Logan Diggs did not play. I think that that's a big miss 
right? Like, I think that not having a dude like Caleb Jackson getting carries the way that he is now and Trey Bradford being a go-to guy in the beginning of the game, <laughs> the weird. That, that, that's going to be a slugfest. If you're running the ball at four yards to carry and you're like you're getting tough yards, what do what do you think is going to happen when you face four? That's what your defensive line should have looked like last year with three guys that got drafted in the NFL. Yeah, and and I, once again, I know like it sounds like a beaten record, like for weeks now, months now that I've been on your show talking about this, but I'm just sharing what. You shared, obviously. I'm sharing what I've heard. I'm sharing what I believe. And I hope I'm wrong. I really do. I hope Gio Paez is so unfreaking believably good. And Jacoby and Guillory, all those guys. I think Tank is going to be fine. It's just, man, you need JVR Suggs to step up. You need Sean Washington. You need someone uh, to step up big time. Th- this will be my final thing on this because we immediately go to star ratings and look. I have been the biggest defender of the star ratings in my own personal evaluations, Blake. I use on three and two, four, seven in every single grade that I get for every single player. It's part of it, right? But just because someone is a five star doesn't mean that they are ready to play year one, right? It, it just so happened to be that LSU has had, you know, in the first year of Brian Kelly, they had three top 100 recruits be elite right out of the womb and one three star. So Mason, obviously Emory, Will and, and Harold, but I would be patient with Dominic McKinley. I really would because there's so much pressure on him to come in and, and be something that LSU desperately, desperately, desperately needs. But this might be more of a year two thing, right? The fits of tackle is hard. It's really freaking hard jumping uh, from going up against five, seven year old kids that are, pledging Sigma Chi at Louisiana Tech to now playing freaking, you know, six foot three, 320 pound offensive linemen that run four eights. You know, it's, it's, it's hard. It's so freaking hard playing defensive tackle uh, in year one, day one. So give McKinley some, some time. And I think at some point he can be a really solid player for LSU. Carter, the power Bryant. I appreciate even though that you've been very ill that you still risk your life by coming on this show. I, well, we talk. The, that's the thing. We we talk on the phone probably what three or four times a week, something like that. During, during the during the off season, we probably about two. two you know, right? during the season, it could be like seven days a week. Let's go. It's 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 that time, man. There's no better time, and I really do mean it as a camera junkie. I really do appreciate Blake investing back into you, the viewer, with yeah, the fancy schmancy camera. Go check out his highlights. They look really good. I don't, uh, you know, hey, man. I, I, told, I told him.